So hey Mark, we're here at Buchler and Friends and uh, you're here with MEMS Associates, right? Yeah, MEMS Associates, I'm Mark, that's his chip. Um, I'm from Buffalo, he's from Detroit. Um, basically what we do here is uh, we're a research group that's kind of gotten out of control. Um, we are reverse engineering the Buchlas that we find at all the universities in the United States. So um, we've been managed to go basically coast to coast and uh, collect all the rare ones. Um, right here we've got the, the T David Tudor mixer, which is housed at Wesleyan University. We've actually been able to make a one-to-one -one replica of. Um, originally it was a pentaphonic mixer that was supposed to control sound in a, in a prism. Um, what you're hearing as an oscillator is our uh, 132 uh, waveform synthesizer, which uh, there's only one of these at Mills at the moment, but we were able to copy. Um, basically, I describe it as a voltage etch-a-sketch. Um, these 32 knobs will actually adjust the waveform. Um, you can actually change the partials to get very complex waveforms. And for 1965, it's probably one of the most complex modules back then. So how did you get kind of access to all of these uh, uh, like universities? Uh, sometimes all you got to do is just ask. You know, it's really weird to think about, but we basically put some feelers out and some of the colleges got in touch with us. And once we started getting in touch with the colleges, they started talking behind the scenes and allowed us to uh, collaborate. So we've been to Wesleyan, University of Illinois, University of Michigan, uh, Mills College. Um, so are these, so obviously you're remaking these, but are these like available to purchase? What, what's the kind of uh, the they deal? They will be very soon. Um, we're actually going to be working with Analog Haven they're going to be licensed by Buchla, so they'll be official. Um, we're basically planning on relaunching Electric Music Store, and uh, Electric Music Store is going to offer PCB and panel sets. So very soon, uh, they'll be available to the public, and everyone will be able to build their own. Um, I'm really big on like the democratization of music, and uh, I think everybody should be able to access these instruments. So um, as well as the kind of ones that we've just seen, what else have you got that, that is kind of rare? Uh, some of the rare modules that you see here would be the 242 programmable pulser. So this will actually have uh, three different rhythmic uh, pulses that you can program with the patch matrix. And uh, the end row, of course, sets the step pattern, how many steps there are in the sequence. And then you have three separate pulses that you could use to control the whole system. So, um, so why, why, would, uh, why would one university have a different or like a random like one-off module than um, mainly for rhythmic uh, reasons. You can actually have like lockstep beats that kind of coincide with each other. But, um, but why would like each university have different systems was sort of my question. Oh, yeah, what, how, how, does, how, how does the history of that work? Like why, why do universities have different systems and, and yeah. A lot of the systems have been uh, broken up over the years. Um, either they were sold off to collectors or just gotten rid of. They would just get rid of some of these systems. So a lot of times Don would also build very small numbers of things. Um, he was very opportunistic in terms of composers needing a specific tool. So oftentimes they would come to him and say, hey, I need something to do this. And he would, of course, uh, grant that wish. But he seemed to be very picky on what he released to the public. Um, and these systems, of course, in the universities are all very different because of that. Cool. So is there plans to, do you have like aspirations of like specific uh, universities and specific systems that you want to like kind of remake? Um, one of the things that we're working with um, in terms of that is working on workshops as well. So the whole idea is that there are systems that are incomplete that are maybe missing specific modules. And uh, having the students be able to build the modules and complete their system at their college is definitely one of the things that we want to do more hands-on approach, we could do lectures and, and teach them how to build their own systems. And not only that, it creates a service record where there's very little service information on these. Um, some of these modules, like we had to work from the ground up with no schematics, so. So literally just tracing uh, the- By hand, the, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. wow. Absolutely. Well, it's a commendable, uh, commendable undertaking. And uh, yeah, I wish you good luck. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers, All Mark. Right. Cheers, Chip.